Why would a realtor want to buy a million dollar plus property from me, a real estate investor, using an owner finance contract? Stay tuned and you'll get to hear it from the realtor herself. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Here we go! This is the Virtual Real Estate Investor Podcast with Vincent Polisi. Buckle your seatbelt seat and prepare to learn how to legally make six figures investing in real estate with no money, no credit check, and nothing but a computer and internet connection. Learn how you too can begin generating buyers and sellers for free today and why you're only two calls away from making a $10,000 or more payday while never leaving the comfort of your home. And now, your host, the virtual real estate investor, Vincent Polisi. All right, guys, let's go. Prepare for blast off in this call, which is a live recorded call of a realtor calling me in reference to purchasing a million dollar plus property in California that I had contracted on. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why would a realtor call you to purchase a property from you when, well, she's a realtor? You're going to get to hear it live for yourself in this call. In addition to that, you're going to get to hear exactly what we talked about in one of the last episodes about how to convert the buyer. And believe it or not, what you're going to get to listen to is her tell me that she's prepared to put over $200,000 in cash down, most of which is going to go to me. But I won't let her see the house until she applies online and pays the $37 application fee. And you will get to hear me tell her that and her accept that. Now, before we get into the call, I'm going to ask you one more time to do me a favor. I've got about a little over four weeks left in iTunes New and Noteworthy, and that is pushing us up in the charts and the rankings, but I need your help. So if you find any value in these podcasts that we're doing, if you would take 30 seconds, please, and hit that subscribe button, click a five-star rating, and leave a quick written review. I'd certainly appreciate it. If you do that as a special gift Showing my appreciation to you, we've got a form up on the website at virtualrealestateinvestor.org forward slash podcast reviews where you can fill the form out and schedule a 30-minute free coaching call with me. No strings attached, all about you, 30 minutes free to get you jump-started in your career in virtual investing so you don't have to waste time and you don't have to waste money driving around, wasting money on marketing, wasting money on Bandit signs and yellow letters and postcards and probate lists. You don't have to waste time doing any of those things. You can do exactly what I do, which is sit back and look at the ocean all day and talk on the phone. That's it. So do me a favor, take 30 seconds, click subscribe in iTunes, five star rating, quick written review, and then let's talk on the phone so we can get you going. Thank you. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> you think I'm with you? I am not with you. And now it's time for Coffees for Closers Only. Listen as Vincent walks you step by step through sales closing techniques, objection handling, pre qualification questions, the four buying personality types, NLP, and everything related to professionally closing sales. Yes, it is. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> You're in my phone now. You're in trouble. I know. I don't often get called by realtors <laughs> for houses. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is like the Twilight Zone. I, I haven't officially saved you. I just knew the 850 number. So no, that's I fine. Called a few minutes ago. You're fine. Um, so get, give me a little bit of information on... on uh, who we are, who we are, what we do, how it all works. Yeah. 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 I'll give you the elevator speech. Okay. Here's okay. the deal. I am a, uh, I'm not a realtor, even though I was many years ago. I'm a real estate investor. Um, I put a program together back in 2007 that was designed to um, help people that wanted to purchase properties but didn't presently qualify for conventional mortgage financing, purchase homes without all the headache and hassle they normally have to go through. And so, what we do is we contract on houses all over the United States and all 50 states where through a variety of contracts where I either uh, control the property through, you know, variants of um, 
subject to or owner financing or option agreements where we actually purchase the houses through a variety of structures as well. And once we've got control over the property, we then have the ability to legally move into a purchase and sale agreement with a third party buyer. And what that does is it bridges the gap between, and I don't know what your situation is, but I'll give you an example. Um, it bridges the gap between somebody that, you know, maybe it may have been a six or seven figure income earner and then all of a sudden the crash hit and they got destroyed and now they're back on their feet, but their credit's destroyed and they're making money and they got cash for down payments, but they can't qualify for conventional financing. Um, well, we have a, an outlet for them to be able to get into a property like the one that you're talking about without having to go through, you know, a conventional mortgage lender and have to, you know, go through the colonoscopy of underwriting and all that stuff to then be declined. It's a very simple, very easy process because I already control the house. I don't have to ask anybody any questions or if there's no offer, counter offer process, if you understand what I mean, because I've already got, sure, I've already yeah. got the contract in place at that point. And so here's an example of how it does work and can work depending on somebody's needs. Um, I'll, you know, I'll give you an example. We've got a one, it's a roughly it's a $1.2 million house in, in uh, Sarasota, Florida, that uh, we've got a professional football player that um, called us on last Thursday and he went and saw it this morning. And so we're going through all the, all the numbers and everything with him and what it does for him in that scenario is it enables him to not have to go through the traditional rigmarole. He's moving into the house, you know, this week Great. and not have to, you know, not have to wait 45 days in underwriting and all the other, sure. and, and hope that he qualifies. They don't find some reason to not approve the loan and all that stuff. And so from the seller's perspective, it's great because the seller, you know, I don't, it's uh, Florida is trying to rebound obviously, but it fell so far. It's, you know, it's taken a little while for that to happen. So you get a seller that's had a property listed for sale on the market for seven months and he can't sell it. And it's not because of valuation issues. It's because 90% of the population doesn't qualify for conventional financing. So right. on the buyer's side, it, it sort of bridges the gap so they don't have to get involved in all the conversations about why they don't qualify or, you know, and it's not always derogatory credit. I've got a testimonial actually about to put up on a deal we did for a, um, one of the executives at um, the headquarters in Walmart with a 740 credit score. He's on a six-figure salary, owns investment property himself. And when he, his wife got pregnant here um, late last year, he went to go get a mortgage and found out he didn't qualify. And he's like, um, well, I've got perfect credit and I have plenty of income and I, you know, everything I don't understand. But because of the way they were calculating the investment income on the investment property, um, oh, yeah, they were showing a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, and so he's, you know, they're throwing him out of the water, so, but he still has to move because his wife's pregnant and they need a bigger house. So we were able to get him into, you know, so it's not, my point there was it's not always a credit scenario that stops somebody. Sometimes it can be debt to income. Sometimes it can be, you know, they're self-employed and can't verify any income. It could be, you know, any number of, of circumstances. So, um it's a very, very straightforward problem. I mean, there, basically there's three, three requirements. You know, do you have the financial wherewithal for the down payment of the property? Do you have the financial ability to make the payments on time? And are you serious about getting qualified for conventional financing during the contract term? And if the answer to those three questions is yes, um, that's what we call common sense underwriting, then we can get, you know, you or a buyer into a property. If we have something in inventory, they could be moving in, you know, today. If we don't have something in inventory that matches or you go out and you see the house and something doesn't work, then we also have a home finder program that we secure properties for buyers, um, you know, using the exact, the exact same scenario. Once they get signed up for that, we go out and find a house and buy it and then they go see it and if they, they like it, they can be moving in. So the biggest challenge really, quite frankly, if you want to know the truth, and, I, and it, it gets a little infuriating because I put the program together years ago to be a no-brainer that made sense for everybody, a good deal for a buyer, a good deal for a seller. And unfortunately, I'm probably going to hear my daughter here in the background, so forgive me. Um, but unfortunately, what happens is, um, and I get this all the time, <laughs> you know, it, it's the deal seems too good to be true. So everybody's like, well, it's, you know, it just seems too good to be true. There's no way that it could be, you know, this easy and this whatever. And I have to tell people, I'm like, well, you know, I can make the deal worse for you if that makes it, yeah, more, you can make it harder if you want. More, more believable. I mean, but, 
it's not, not rocket science, okay? I mean, the seller wants to sell and can't, okay? He doesn't want to eat payments on a vacant house. I mean, this guy's eating a payment on a $1.2 million property in Florida for seven months. He doesn't want to do that anymore. Um, he's going to what's, what's the story behind this Santa Lee's home? Because what would you like to know specifically? Well, I, I just, I, I am in real estate, which mm -hmm. I, I believe I said in my, um, and we sure. currently live there, so I know that that, that um, community is moving, especially the homes on, you know, it's considered on the west side under the bridge. Um, and so many of those homes, you know, has, are, are not listed for long. The, those homes under you know, a million and a half dollars are moving quickly. So mm -hmm. um, my husband and I actually looked at that same model, oh, yeah, not rent. that property, but that model okay. um, to rent a, a month or so ago. So, you know, what's the story behind this one specifically? That I'm surprised they've had a hard time selling it. Uh, the same as probably everybody else. The you know, it's, it's not the that there aren't buyers that want to buy them. It's whether or not the buyers can get qualified, especially when you're talking about a super jumbo, you know, purchase transaction. Right. Um, which is our problem. which is exactly our problem. My husband's a developer. I'm mm -hmm. in real estate, so we're up to commission people sure um, you know, well so I, I don't feel bad because I don't qualify either I don't want to qualify because I don't need to but <laughs> I, I don't qualify either so don't don't feel bad about that it doesn't that's not a my mind it's not a slight against somebody what they I spent 12 years 12 years in mortgage banking and owned a mortgage company so believe me when I tell you I know what um, right I know what the, how, how stupid the lenders get you know so <laughs> right. it's, it's not a it's not a slight that you don't qualify so don't even have to feel funny about that with me so, so he, you're, you're both basically self-employed, and right. if you're smart, you're writing off every damn thing you can so you don't have to pay uh, California and federal tax. And so that's probably throwing your debt-to-income ratio out of whack, I would guess. Right, and we both have credit issues for different reasons. Okay. Mine was due to an X, but we, I, don't, I haven't even pulled my credit out, to, to be honest with you. Well, you don't listen. I don't care about the past credit, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, and if you understand, and I'm not trying to give you, you know, some <laughs> my resume here, but just so you understand, um, I've repaired more credit reports than than you can shake a stick at with the thousands of deals I've done over the years in, in mortgage lending, and since then, um, the to give you an example of what can happen in a very short order that most people are not aware of because they don't understand the uh, federal guidelines and federal timelines, but anything and everything that can be done from a credit perspective is handled from, let me rephrase that, from a credit repair perspective, perspective is handled within 76 days or less. Now, you'll never hear that from any credit repair company because they're in the business of collecting, you know, monthly payments like Lexington Law and that kind of thing, which is one of the biggest scams that's out there. Um, but we took one client who was a, she worked for um, Hartsfield Jackson in Atlanta and she came to me with a 376 credit score. I don't think I'd ever seen a credit score that low before. She had 31 derogatory accounts when she came to us and doing exactly what I told her to do in 69 days, she legally eliminated 28 of the 31 accounts gone and increased her score by 191 points. So if we can do that, and the only thing we had to do was have her send off two separate letters, if we can impact a credit report and a credit score that dramatically, in that short of a time frame, how how valid and legitimate is that cattle grading system, which is really what it is. It's designed to help the lenders make more money, not um, help you. So I don't care about all that because it's, it's, it's complete nonsense. Like I said, there's only three things I'm looking at. I'm going to use common sense underwriting. Do you have the money for the down payment? Do you have the ability to make the payments on time? Because I'm not in the foreclosure business and I don't want to be. And are you serious about getting qualified? For conventional financing during the contract term because the obvious end game for any seller that we're dealing with is they want out. By the way, you know, let's, right. if they could sell today and cash out or get out from underneath the liens, they would do that. And, and the reason they're opting for a scenario like this is because they haven't been able to because people can't get qualified. Right. And what's the typical timeline that they want? They want to be switched over to conventional. 
Well, I mean, everybody wants yesterday for obvious reasons. I mean, our normal... I guess I should say, what's the average time frame, in your opinion, that that actually happens? I, I traditionally, and let me, I'm going I'm to qualify this with a caveat up front. I traditionally set you know, probably 90% of the deals up at 24 months because for the average person, it, you know, especially when you're talking about Fannie Mae or FHA, it doesn't take, it shouldn't take them any longer than 12 months in most cases to qualify if they follow and do exactly what we show them how to do. When you're dealing, when we're dealing with self-employed people like yourself on a super jumbo deal, we have to make allowances for the fact that, you know, the lenders are changing the guidelines and adding layering, you know, constantly. And so what I don't want to do, and this is the same conversation I had with a football player this morning, is I'm not going to take, you know, 100000 plus for a down payment and put you into a, a slam dunk deal for 12 or 18 or 24 months um, where you've done everything that you're supposed to do to qualify, but they come out and they change the guideline and now you don't qualify. And you lose the house and you lose your down. Yeah, that doesn't, that's not a good deal for you. So, in those scenarios, we have to make certain allowances. And in some cases, I'll give you an example. I had a, I got a client um, that he was self employed on a property and it was about a, roughly a half million dollar house in 10 Mile, Tennessee. And he, you know, his accountant was writing every damn thing off that they could write off. And so he's showing about $25,000 in income, which obviously does not pay for a half million dollar house. And so, when we restructured his deal, you know, we set him up on a 10 year, he wanted a 10 year plan because he had about 10 years left for retirement. And we just put him to put together a complete, you know, 10 year payoff. So he never had to refinance that he just pay the property off and have amortization over that 10 year period. So it really boils down to what do you need? What do you think you need? And, you know, if that's something that can be accommodated, that's obviously the, the route to go. All right. Well, um, I guess I need to just think through this and uh, get back to you. With, I'm sure I'll have some more questions. Okay. And and uh, is is this? Can we see this property? Yeah. Of course. So let me know when it's available to see, and and we'll uh, run over there and check it out. Okay, yeah, let me, I need to, you're going to probably not like this, but I need to explain it to you anyway. Because um, the model I use is, is probably a little reverse from what you, sort of you're used to. I don't ever show houses, especially when we're dealing in the higher end like this, un, until and unless somebody has understood what it is we're doing. This is a program that they're looking for, and they've made applications, so we know that we're not wasting our time or the seller's time. Um, that rubs some people the wrong way, but over the years, it's proven to be the very best way to do it so we don't waste time with a, a lot of unnecessary, you know, showings for people that weren't serious. So if that's the route that we want to go, I mean, I'll give you send your links to the website and you can take a look at it, and then um, we can proceed at that point, and I'll be happy to schedule it for you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I've got your email also. I think, I think I actually already sent your links, but I'll send them to you directly so you can take a look. Uh, well, I did get an email from you earlier just asking yeah. if we were still interested. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Um, what is your time frame for moving if you were to, if everything was to be what you wanted? Uh, 30 days. Okay. And then as far, what, as far as the down payment, where are you at with the down payment that you're comfortable with? Um, you're, you're asking percentage or dollar or yeah, just dollar amount. Well, I mean, we're 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 ready now. Our problem is, I have a, a, a son and a daughter, and we're similar to the other situation that you had talked about. We have another one on the way, and we just need more space. So it's either a function of us moving, finding something, giving our current landlord notice, and moving in 30 days, or waiting until the baby's born and moving in, you know couple of months. Gotcha. Once, so, uh, right, but what is the dollar amount that you're, you were thinking of if you're in the business? Obviously, you know, you you know, they're looking for 20 or 30 percent down on a Yeah, ideally, ideally 20 percent. Okay. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Um, is that, and I'm assuming that's liquid and available now? You, you said you're, you have a baby or you're pregnant and going to have a baby? Both. I have a one-year-old and a 15-month-old and I'm due in, uh, about three weeks with a second. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. 
keep getting that reaction. <laughs> What's um? Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm curious. I I want to ask you how old you are, but not not offend you at the same time. <laughs> I'm curious if if you went through what we just went through, which was. So I was working uh, I, the office. I'm, uh, I'm 38. Oh, okay, yeah. So very, very similar. So I was working the office one day. My wife comes in with this, uh, and I'm I'm 44. She comes in with this um, shocked look on her face, and I, th I thought something was wrong, or somebody died, or something. <laughs> yeah, we, we had we had a hard time getting pregnant with my daughter, so we didn't think it would happen this quickly for the second one. But I was, you know, at that age where I knew I had limited window, so it just ended up being a quick blessing with number two. Wow, fantastic. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. My, my, my daughter just turned one um, last week, Sunday a week ago, so it's um, so yeah, the, the little late life surprise. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> and, and yeah, my wife and I are looking at each other like, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I'll be 45 here in a couple months, and I'm just like... <laughs> Was not prepared for this at this age. <laughs> oh yeah, they'll they'll keep you young. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh man, she's a, she's a pistol. Let me tell you. Yeah, my daughter yeah. is as well. She is a pistol. Well, thank well, you so much for the information, well, and I yep. I look forward to your email. My pleasure. And like I said, if this house doesn't work for you for whatever reason, I can get you something else similar in the same. Um, development there that does you know i guess you're familiar with i forget what they call it it's the that weird tax thing they've got there i can't remember what the name yeah of it is. the mellow roots and the yeah that's it that's it yeah, yeah. that is some weird name okay so you're already yeah. familiar with that yeah unfortunately gotcha gotcha okay very good i'll send this to you and if you have any questions right. definitely give me a call back thanks so much my pleasure bye-bye Thank you for listening to the Virtual Real Estate Investor Podcast with Vincent Polisi. If you found any value in this podcast, please use our Give to Get method and take a moment to give us a five-star rating in iTunes and your favorite podcast service so we can keep giving you excellent episodes of real content you can use to profit today.